What's up, everybody? It, I'm Miranda Alcaraz, and this is episode 15 of the More Than Nothing podcast. I have my husband, Julian Alcaraz, back in here with me today. This is this is third episode. You're heard. like once every five times. Wow. Or so. That's great. People like you. <laughs> awesome. I'm honored. <laughs> uh, because I've been getting a lot of DMs from people or suggestions from people about a topic that, so a lot of times the more than nothing is about fitness, obviously, because that's what we do. And that's what I, um, am good at coming up with analogies for, and it's our community, right? Um, or, you know, we talk about business or whatever. I've been getting requests for us to talk about our relationship and nice. how we balance everything and how we um, get, get along because we're in a unique situation where we work together. So we're together a lot. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about you, but I get people telling me all the time that there's no way they could do that, mm -hmm. that they could work with their spouse. Mm -hmm. um, so we, I've, I've gotten like, hey, can you and Julian do uh, an episode about how you manage your relationship and how um, all of that. So because this is the more than nothing podcast, I thought, you know, the concept of more than nothing and just being consistent and um, putting in whatever effort you have that day, it applies to anything really. Yes. Mm -hmm. And it can apply to our relationship. And I think both of us kind of have that approach to our relationship um, and keep an eye on our relationship in that way. Um, and it's definitely something that we've had to learn together. One thing that I worry about, because I've actually gotten messages from people only once or twice, um, who have said that they are under the impression that we have this perfect relationship uh. so much so that one person said they unfollowed me uh. because they didn't like seeing that we were like, it made them feel bad about the situation they were in with their, um, significant other or they had just broken up or something that they didn't like seeing it, which I completely understand. But at the same time, like, I don't want us to give that perception to people. No, because that's not the case at all. I mean, it's extremely hard. Every day is a challenge. You know, I, I think there's good moments. There's bad moments. Um, I would perfect examples today. Mm -hmm. This morning. Oh, we that was the worst. I was like getting ready to get out of there because I'm ready to kind of come to the office. Right before I'm about to leave, we have four dogs. Midgey, your dog, which already drives me up the wall. but He's 13 years old, okay? He drives me, which sometimes really gets under me. Anyway, <laughs> he has been accumulating his dry poop because we've been procrastinating calling a groomer. And so now I've scheduled the groomer, but then I've tried calling other groomers. But anyway, bottom line, he's hairy and he needs a haircut. Poop is accumulating his butthole. <laughs> As he's running upstairs, I'm getting ready to leave. I'm ready. I'm just like, you did leave. House. You were like here. Well, no. So he, I look down at him and he's like scooching and he's whining oh, yeah, yeah. and he's like leaving poop streaks all over the floor. And I'm like, just really adding to that, really adding to it. I'm like, your dog is streaking the floor. So I picked him up, I threw him in his kennel, and then- You cleaned I, up the streaks. Well, I wasn't going to, but then right before I was about to leave, I knew the amount of stress that that would have gave you because I know that you, you as well like to get into a flow mm -hmm. with your stuff. So I was like, okay, let me go do this. So then I ran back upstairs, scrubbed little poop streaks, left, and I was like, okay, I did my part. And then I'm halfway to the office, I get a phone call from you, you need to come home now. <laughs> Major's not letting me cut his poop, his it was butt like, hairs. It was like blocking his ability to go poop outside, I feel like. And so he kept like wanting to go out and then wanting to come in and then whining and this and that. I tried to cut it myself. I really did. So it was one of those moments <laughs> where I'm like, oh my goodness. I just want to get to the office. This is, so I stopped, took a deep breath in, busted a Yui, went back. We, f we fixed the problem as best we could, and then back to the office. So those are the things that, like, obstacles happen in relationships no matter what, you know. And I know that, you know, if I would have said, no, I got to get to work, well, then what would that have done? 
then that mm-hmm. would have really ruined both of our day because now it would become an argument between both of us and like you wouldn't have felt heard or helped and then I would have been frustrated because then you were like coming at me and then I would have been like oh it's your dog and whatever but it's those moments that you have to talk, stop and slow yourself down come back both take care of the problem move forward and I've even left told you right before because I think we were both stressed out and we were both stressed out and I was like all right Look, I think it's time. We're in a position where we just need to get somebody to take care of calling these groomer places, calling these little things that, yes, we could do that. But what happens when we do do that and we get on hold or they schedule us three weeks out and then we want to get them done way before that? Well, that we don't want to focus our time doing those things Mm -hmm. because we have so many other things to do. So I was like, I think it's time for us to kind of look into getting an assistant for both of us. Or else these problems are going to continue to happen because we are we both like to get into a flow now with our responsibilities and it's both very extremely valuable. And yeah, so I think with a lot of things, just taking the time to slow down and realizing like you're my partner, I need to help you out. And then vice versa. You know? Um, we had a situation the other day as well where I was just meal prepping on Sunday. And I was, I like meal prepping. I get into my flow. I enjoy mm-hmm. it. Knox is running around like a little banshee helping you out, decorate. I'm meal prepping. And then you went upstairs, came down, and then you were like, oh, look at my, look at, my, look at the tree. Or do you think it looks nice? And I looked up and I was like, yeah. And then, but I didn't put much thought into it, not realizing that that's the equivalent of like, you, you're like, hey, like it hurts my feelings sometimes when you don't say thank you for making this house cozy. And the way, like, you know, I try to tell you thank you for meal prepping because sometimes I feel like you don't think what I do is important. And instinctively, sometimes I want to defend myself, but realizing that you are doing such a, an amazing thing to make our house cozy and all you want is to hear a thank you and actually, like, slow down to appreciate the things that you do for our family. Because you do a lot of things. I think that's where realizing what we both like to enjoy and just appreciating each other for those things that we enjoy doing. Yeah. So with that one, it was Knox. First of all, he was not helping me decorate. He was making it take 10 times longer. Mm -hmm. Um, But you were out working out and I had put a lot of work and time and thought into making our house very festive for Mm -hmm. Christmas, pretty much by myself. Yeah. And you, um, I had worked on, we have like a 12 foot tree because we have very high ceilings where the tree is. And um, you erected the tree, I will give you that. But the rest of it, uh, like all of the ornaments and buying the ornaments and planning all of that stuff. And I do enjoy it, I love it so much, Mm -hmm. but it does take time. And especially with Knox helping. (laughs) Um, You were out working out and you came in, you looked right at it and said, nothing about it. Mm -hmm. And then you just went on about your day and then you started meal prepping and then I asked you to go look at the tree again. Um, I think it's, uh, it goes to like appreciating the things that your partner does that, okay, so the example that I gave with you for that one was you didn't grow up with Christmas decorations at all, zero. Mm -hmm. So I kind of was thinking in my mind like maybe it just doesn't mean that much to him. Like Mm -hmm. I'm putting so much effort into it. And a lot of it is for me because I really enjoy it. But I also want uh, you and Knox and the new baby to have these like amazing memories of Christmas and um, take that with them when they leave our house. And, you know, that kind of stuff just adds to the memories, right? And um, so there was a piece of me that thought, he doesn't care if I do this or if I don't. Mm -hmm. Like it means nothing to him. He didn't grow up with it. So maybe... It just felt like maybe you didn't care about it. And so I think just like recognizing those little things. um, And even if you didn't care about it, caring about it because I care about it. Or knowing that I'm not just doing it for me, that I'm doing it for our whole family and remembering that. Yeah. And um, yeah. Yeah, I think sometimes, um, you know, for example, a lot of the... What it comes down to, I think the approach that I take when, with this is I do the things that I do 
because it's just what I enjoy doing. Like for example, like the I love making food for you, right? And when you genuinely love doing things you do, like you don't expect to hear thank you. You just do it because you enjoy it and you like, you know, um, giving. It's like you enjoy giving. And as my wife, I enjoy giving you the the anything that I can possibly throw at you, mm -hmm. right? That I know that I'm good at. Um, and vice versa, you know, you're doing what you're right. I think sometimes learning to acknowledge that because it's foreign to me or it's not something I really connect to um, doesn't mean it's not. I don't appreciate it and just showing you my appreciation for that. I, those are things that I can definitely work on um, just moving forward in general because you are very festive. You you do those things like you just said. I want to do those to create the memories for the family. We're realizing that you said that you want to do those things, so th that it means so much to you. And because of that, you're right, like I will always do my best to just appreciate it, mm -hmm. you know. Um, so I, I think in a, in any in a, I think in any relationship, but especially in a marriage, you know, once you start feeling like you're being attacked and you start kind of working, there's always going to be some kind of weirdness until you uh, learn to figure it out. Um, but respecting what each other likes to do, and just always appreciating it, and it doesn't always always have to be like a like an being said all the time, but just making sure that's not something that you think, oh, well, she doesn't need to hear it. I'm here kind of deal, right? Like that yeah. ego macho mentality. Like, yeah. That's never a good thing. Yeah. You know, um, but I want to go like, because I think sometimes people have this perception of like, our, so those are both like within the last week examples. Oh, yeah. But like if we go back to when we first met and when we were dating and when we were pregnant with Knox and just building the business um, there was like so much that both of us had to learn about each other before we got to this point where we could literally even have a conversation about, yeah. Hey, you hurt my feelings yeah. and have it not go terribly bad mm -hmm. and wrong. Um, because I know at first with you, you were very, uh, closed off. Oh yeah. Um, and wanted to give the perception of being perfect all the time. Mm hmm. And I've always been very open and, um, but f had a hard time feeling like a connection because you were, and not closed off in, in like a, in like a, I don't know, like a, how most people picture closed off. Like you were very loving and very fun and very, we laughed together and stuff. But as far as like sharing anything real, <laughs> Yeah, there wasn't share, there wasn't that. I didn't want to share anything about my past or because feelings. I was ashamed of it. Therefore, I didn't ever like any questions directed towards my past or vice versa. I didn't even want to know about your past. You wouldn't even watch. So there's a documentary about when I broke my neck yeah. and it has my ex in it. You didn't want he didn't, he didn't want to he's refused to watch it. It took me months to get you to watch that. And then yeah. afterwards you were like, "Yeah, great. I didn't really want to watch it. I just watched it cuz you wanted me to." Uh-huh. Yeah, I mean I think, again, yeah, even in the beginning, we then we started, the, we did a lot of therapy, which really helped um, because I did notice that I had a problem with not um, being vulnerable. I think that was definitely one of my biggest weaknesses is not allowing myself to be vulnerable. And once I did, it made things a lot, it was, it set up a relationship in a better path than it was at the time, mm -hmm. you know. Um, because I was always the kind of person, because I hadn't dealt with a lot of those things, I always felt the need to prove that I was right. And like, no, I would always kind of turn it around on you mm -hmm. as opposed to looking inward and realizing what my thoughts were. And I think that was that was the issue. Um, and it's been an evolution over the four years, you know, and um, you just, you gotta keep you gotta keep trying yeah and I think like both of us had this in a different way um, like perfectionism so for me I felt like if you weren't telling me and I'm still like this kind of telling me constantly that you thought I looked good or that you were proud of me or that you liked this or like that or whatever 
like constant words of affirmation, I guess, mm -hmm. that I needed to do more. Yeah. Like if I did more, he would appreciate it. Like he's not appreciated. I need to do more, more, more. And then for you, if, if my feelings were upset about not just our relationship, but literally if I was upset because of a work situation, yeah, would you would get defensive. Yeah. Like if I called you upset about something being wrong with my car, you would get defensive and like feel like you weren't making me happy or like you, I, it was like an attack on you. And I think because I just didn't know how to communicate. Yeah. And so therefore I just didn't, I just stayed quiet. And then you were like, uh, what? Like, are you listening? And yeah. I'm like, yeah, I am listening. Like, um, and then that would, you were like, well, you're not saying anything. And then I'm like, well, I'm just trying to listen. And then I would get defensive. Mm -hmm. And I just, I, because I just did not know how to communicate properly. I didn't, pro properly. I didn't like conflict. Um, you know, I just chose to, my approach is rolling over a lot of things. It's like addressing it, moving on. How do we fix it? But realizing that sometimes, you know, people in general need their way of coping with certain things. And sometimes it's just understanding how that individual works so that way you can slow down and not with everyone, right? Obviously with the people that you care about and realizing how it is to communicate with them um, so you can get through the hard conversations, get get through the, the, the tough moments and the and just learning how to listen. Mm -hmm. I think well, that's one of the biggest things too is just learning how to properly listen. I think too, like people have this idea of like a perfect relationship as people who never fight mm -hmm. with each other. Um, so, I mean, Nobody posts videos of them fighting with their spouse on Instagram. It's always like the perfect <laughs> photos or you're going to post about your spouse and say how much you love them or how, you know, how great they are when everything they do for you. Like that's the type of stuff that people post. And so nobody really knows, except for people that you're super close to. Maybe there are like one or two closest friends who those people mm -hmm. tell you about the arguments or whatever they have yeah. with their spouse. People just assume. But um, I know I've talked about this a lot. Um, maybe not on the podcast, but I've, I've told lots of people this in my advice when they ask about our relationship. I fight and have fought with you so much more than any, all, you take all of my relationships up till when I was 33 years old and met you combined. And it would equal like the first year of, or not the first year, the second year of our relationship in total fights, not even close. Like, so um, was it like that for you before, like with other people? Because I feel like you would just avoid the fights. You would just like I would. break I mean, up or something. <laughs> I, would. I just would stop. I, I didn't know how to communicate. So therefore, once it was done, it was like I was I was over it. I was over it, you know, and that's why my longest actual relationship was like uh, what, eight, nine months. But then there was like other ones that were the longer ones, but they were off and on, off and mm -hmm. on. And they weren't. If there was a fight, you would break up until you no both deep, forgot about no it. There was deep connection there. It was just very surface and... <clears throat> That was the problem back then. Um, and so, yeah, realizing that you got to just got to learn how to listen. You got to mm -hmm. learn how to listen. And, you know, read some books as well. You know, there's the, the five love languages and things that your, therapy, your therapists are going to talk to you about as well and recommend. But actually, you know, doing it so you can start having a little bit more understanding as to kind of how you like to be loved, right? Because we, we each one of us is loved a certain way. And we usually end up giving love the way um, we like to receive it. And I think that's where lots of relationships kind of clash because you expect to receive it the way you give it. And that's where a lot of the problems are. And if you don't get it that way, you get really defensive. You're mm -hmm. like, well, what, what's going on? Like, what am I doing? It's like, well, nothing. Like, you're not doing anything wrong. And I th those are actually some of the argument, biggest arguments that we've had. You were like, do you not love me? Like, what am I doing wrong? Mm -hmm. And I'm sitting there trying to argue with you that, no, you're not doing anything you, wrong. Your go-to is the listing every single thing that you've yeah, done then to I show me. To, yeah, I would try to defend <laughs> myself and be like, no, th but I've done this, this, this. And then that's just not productive. Right. So realizing, like taking the time to one of the biggest repetitive things that you would always say is like, I feel like you're not listening to me. And once that, that became like a common thing, I'm like, okay, you got to learn how to listen. And so, you know, I think that's why I jumped into some of these books, psychological books as well. 
and a lot of them just summarize everything, slow down, listen to what the individual is actually telling you. And it's not about you, it's about them. Yeah. And once, I mean, and there's going to be times where that's going to be extremely hard because we are emotional. We are, and tired. And we are emotional, we're tired, we got other things to worry about. You know, there's just so much going on. So it does make, um, in reality, our, our emotions as a couple become a little bit harder because we're dealing with everything else. And then at the end of the day, then, if you have something that's built up, then, you know, I want to make sure that that outlet is heard as well and just trying to support you. And then, but if you don't feel supported, then it, or vice versa, it's just a lot. Yeah. But it's ever growing. Yeah. It's just, it's just ever growing. You, you got to learn how to slow down. Yeah. So I think like, so bringing it back to like the more than nothing concept, I think there's definitely through, because we have had to work very closely together for, um, we're now on halfway through our second pregnancy and um, f growing the business together and uh, literally found out we were pregnant and had this business almost the same day that we moved in together. So like fuel to the fire of what we, we had to learn everything very quickly. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what made it so like crazy for that year for sure. Yeah. Um, but I think like as we've progressed, cause we've only been married for less than two years. We've yeah. been together for four, yeah. but we've been married for less than two, um, lived together for three. Um, what, what we've learned, I think we're getting better. Actually, I know, <laughs> I know we're getting better, but so there's a couple things. Number one, you got to know getting defensive. Like the defensive thing, it doesn't, it does nothing for anyone. Yeah. I think that the other thing that we've learned is, and this was like a, a suggestion from the therapist that we had for a long time, is there has to be a time limit on the talks. And that's the thing too, right? I, there's <laughs> been parts of us that have extended past those time limits. It always and it, goes badly. And it goes so bad. I think that's why you ended up doing one of your vlogs where you're crying in the car because it went past the yeah, time. Yeah, that was the that most recent have. one. And I think my fault in that was continuing to just be like, are you, you know, knowing that it was on your mind and wanting to like fix it immediately. And I it was like, you want to talk about it more? Even though I wasn't ready for you to continue to talk about it, I still said it. And I think that's where my fault was because listening to i should have processed okay we're exhausted one we've been talking about this for a long time two you know you're gonna that's another one. making sure that if you say you're gonna talk about it later actually talk about it later because if not then we get suppressed mm -hmm. and then it's gonna come out and it's gonna be so much worse and that's what guys are known for oh uh, let, i'll talk about it let's talk about it later yeah. but not actually doing so so yeah that was yeah, so the length of time I think is like a really big one, especially when you're going like late into the night and it's already been like a long day. That's where, I mean, most of our worst arguments, I would say for sure, at happen night. at nighttime. The worst time. Yeah, well, but that's also the only time we're ever alone. So yeah, it's the only time we can really talk. But um, so on top of that, I do feel that understanding what the other person is looking for. So there's a couple things that I think we have learned from each other. I want to feel like he understands what I'm saying and how I feel. He wants to fix it. So like your method is to just fix it. Okay, cool. So this is the, we're going to do this, this, and this, and that's fine. And the plan is there, but I still feel like you don't understand why I was so upset. And so that's where like the talking can get too long is because I feel like I have to like come up with 19 different analogies and like really like try to explain it. And yeah. so um, knowing kind of what the other person's, uh, looking for with that. And then also one big, big thing that we uh, still struggle with is your family's not super um, affectionate, like physical affection. Yeah, they're not. And so I, <laughs> I'll literally be like, you're very affectionate all the time, except for if I'm upset. If I'm crying and mad or sad, you're, it's like the time when it's like the least likely for you to give me a hug for some reason. It's re and it's, it's been like something that we've definitely gotten in arguments. I'm like, all I wanted you to do was come over and give me a hug when I was upset. And even when I'm not as upset at you, 
it, and you've told me that people crying makes you uncomfortable mm-hmm. before. Um, and so I think learning like, hey, it's as simple as if I just go over there and give her a hug, she'll probably like be fine. <laughs> but that's still something that we're learning. Yes, it is. Yeah, right? Mm-hmm. Absolutely. But yeah, you know, it really is just something that check your ego, slow down, listen, and then make baby steps. Actually listen to what the person's telling you and don't make it about you. When they're speaking, understand them. And don't be so stubborn. Like, I also refuse to tell you to give me a hug. I want you to know that that's what I want. You know, and you hear that so much. Oh, my God. That makes me so mad. You'll you'll say, just tell me that you want a hug. And I'm like, no, I want you to want to hug That's like me. the worst thing as a female. I'm telling you right now. If you're I a female, want you to want to hug say, me. I want you to want to. I want you to. <laughs> I want you to think what I'm thinking is your thinking. Like, that is just an endless loop. That is so frustrating. Tell me what, cause clearly <laughs> I have not been giving you what you want right now. Tell me what's on your mind. Because one thing I try to remind you, if you tell me I have no objections, I'm not going to be like, no. I'm like, oh, she needs a hug. That is like a cheat sheet right away as opposed to trying to go all the way. It's like I'd rather hit a 200 meter jog than a, run a whole mile. And... Just, just tell me, just tell me, you know, and I think that's very helpful. And I know Sally can relate. But also learning that I always just want to hug if I'm sad. Exactly. Would be easy for you to do too. Yeah. Yeah, and just remembering that instead of going into getting defensive. I think also um, little things can go a long way. I think, again, like with the more than nothing thing, I think you're like, oh, we need like, and this is uh, something that we've talked about a lot too, we need a, like a, a trip or like this date night or like this like big production thing. And it's like, no, I just want to like s- play connect four with you at our house. Or I just want to um, little things that make a huge difference. Uh, several times a week, you'll bring, I'll still be in bed and you'll bring the coffee up to me while I'm still in bed so I can sip on it before I come down to Wild Banshee Knox. Mm-hmm. Um, or recently, because I know you've been waking up with Knox so that I can get a little bit more sleep while I'm pregnant, I'll notice there are still a few dishes in the sink, which is just annoying when you're making breakfast for Knox, and I'll clean them and put them in the dishwasher instead of just knowing that you'll do it in the morning, and you go down, and it's not something it's expected, but, like, those little things, I think people really overlook the little things and they try to do the big things. So they're, like, buying presents and they're, like, planning getaways and they're all this stuff. When it's like those little things add up, especially because, you know, I hate doing the dishes. Mm-hmm. Um, or And so I'm doing that specifically for you. Like that's not like the Christmas tree thing. Like I did that specifically to make your morning better or, you know, you bringing me the coffee. It's that's 100 percent just for me. Yeah. Um, so I think that 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 that's really important in remembering those those things. And then also just. um small like remembering to compliment your partner or say nice things or notice things but also notice saying the things that you know mean a lot to your partner for example I know that you don't really care if I tell you that you're handsome or good looking because for so long you felt like that's that was like the only thing that people would compliment you on Mm -hmm. is like your fitness or how attractive you are and so I know it goes a lot further for me to tell you that something that you did at the office this week was awesome or that I'm proud of you for all the books that you're reading or asking you about the books or proud of you for how you learned to do this or this on the computer or whatever. I know that that means a lot more to you. Um, And remembering like what's important to that person, what they want to hear. I still tell you that you're, you know, you're looking good. (laughs) Because I think that that's important to hear too, and I and if I think it, I say it. But mm-hmm. remembering that that's not the most important thing that you want to hear. Yeah. Um, yeah, those are all just a small piece of what can always happens, you know. But those are those basics will get you real far. Mm-hmm. They really do. So it's been a interesting journey for sure, and. 
I think one of the things that I always try to tell you too, I, it's okay to have these tough moments because, again, we can either learn from them and learn because I mean, if we're trying to be in this for life, like we have to figure this out now, like, mm -hmm. and not always every time this comes up, you know, we can't move past it, you know. So I think it's great. Just learn. Yeah, I just want to continue always work on the weaknesses that I have, so that way I can. Just be the best version here. That's right. Mm -hmm. One step at a time. It's four years, and I still little, have so much, I mean, a lot to do. Little steps. Yeah, baby steps. Yeah, because now there's the whole kids element. And, the, and, and basically, the way that we work together is we don't really overlap in tasks too much. We agree with almost every decision, yeah. I would say. We don't overlap in tasks. So I think it's important for those of you that are listening that we're hoping this was going to be about how we work together. Um, don't have the same job title. No, I think that's one of the things I had to separate. And it took me a while because I wanted to be involved. And I realized, no, I was like, you're amazing at what you're doing. Like, you crush it. I was like, I'm not going to interrupt any of that because... I still have so like your level one seminar expertise and everything and even going back to student body council and I, <laughs> like a lot of the creativity and all that stuff. I'd be an idiot to want to interrupt that flow because you're already so amazing at it. Let me use my talents elsewhere. That's where you try to separate like strengths and weaknesses, mm -hmm. you know, and so acknowledging that you're I'm already learning a lot by just say, observing you. So that's already great knowledge. Um, but in the position that we're in, you're you just have more experience with that, and it's great. It's a great thing. Where before it was like an ego bruiser, where it's like, or you can be butthurt about it, or you can now go get caught up and educated on other stuff that are your already your strengths, and now make them stronger, and then just roll with that. And that way, you guys, we both have each other to kind of keep propelling this business forward. Yeah. Yeah. So we don't really we don't really argue too much about work stuff almost mm -hmm. at all. No. Just when it gets stressful and busy and one of us has tasks to finish when the other one doesn't isn't as busy or whatever can be like but it's not really ever a, an argument or anything like that. No. And very rarely is it like, "Hey, why didn't you do this?" or "Hey, why I'm waiting for this" or whatever because our tasks, again, like they don't really overlap too much as far as work goes. No, they don't. Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, that's just the beginning. I think this is an evolution, uh, an evolutionary conversation. Mm -hmm. And I think it's be good to kind of do updates as this progresses as well to show people that, no, it's not perfect. It's not. No, and you can have a relationship it, just because you're not arguing or fighting is not a sign of health. If anything, it's probably a sign of neither one of you has any idea what the other person's thinking and no one's saying anything. Um, mm -hmm. And it, that's not fulfilling. It's easy, and mm -hmm. I know from experience that it's easy, yeah. but it's not fulfilling and it's not a good place for growth and um, connection and everything to be had. No. Yeah. We'll wrap up this week's episode of your... My little podcast. He called it that I again. I say little Sally. podcast because it's we're in a you little room. You want to get in a fight, call it a little podcast. She took it a different way. We're in a little room and it's cozy. So I say the little podcast. Not thinking. It's because Salvi's little. Oh, you're taking it into fighting words. Wow. <laughs> but thank you for having me on your yeah. episode. Massive podcast. Worldwide. Prestige. Prestige. Worldwide.